Hey everybody, it's the Multi Mom Candice Craft, and I wanted to do some videos this year, Happy New Year, on some books that have little activities in them. So I'm going to go over each of the beginnings of the books, and then throughout the year, I'll try to do like shorts, you know, video shorts, or just regular videos on the activities in the books. So let's take a look at what we got. So this first one I got at Ollie's, it says it was $14.99, but I got it for $2.99. And it's called I Love the Earth, a journal for celebrating and protecting our planet. And it's shiny. So that's the front and this is the back. And it says, a guided journal for writing, sketching, and learning how to care for the planet. With prompts for writing and drawing inspiring quotes about the natural world, plus fascinating earth science infographics, this journal will encur encourage nature and science-loving fans of all ages to fill in the pages with ideas, sketches, and big dreams for making the planet a better place. Well, the first thing I wanted to do was take this Ollie sticker off, but it's not going coming off without a fight. It's wanting to stick pretty hard, so I'm just going to leave it on, I guess. If we take a look at the back here, it says this book was from 2018 and then again in 2020. You can take a look at that stuff there. Let's open it up and see what's on the inside. So first it says this book belongs to... So I'm going to write my name there. And this book belongs to... Candace. With a crappily drawn heart. <laughs> there we go. A-K-A... -A the... Multi-Mom. Ta-da! There you go. So the next page is just blue. And then the page after that looks like it could be a coloring page if I wanted it to be. A journal for celebrating and protecting our planet. Basically what the cover has. And then you come over to the next page. It says the big world we live in is smaller than you think. About this journal, we live on one amazing planet, from the mysteries of our deep oceans to the wonders of our tropical rainforests. There is so much to discover and explore. Do you love animals, plants, and being outside? Do you care about protecting our planet? If so, then this journal is for you. This is a place for you to write down your ideas, ask questions about the world around you, and dream big for the future. There are also some handy reference pages in the front that will help you better understand the Earth. Happy journaling. Then the next page says levels of ecological organization. It's a great big complicated world out there. You can study the entire planet as a whole or study the habits of just one single organism. The levels of ecology put it all into context. The largest level is a big biosphere, which includes everywhere life is found on Earth. And with every level of ecology down from the biosphere, we can zoom in and look at sequentially smaller and more specific parts of the world. The smallest level of ecology is when we study an, study, wow. when we study an individual living thing. For example, a squirrel. The levels are like Russian nesting dolls, with each of the six levels fitting inside the next largest level. So this is showing you the biosphere. Everywhere life on Earth is found. Biome. The region defined by a specific climate, its temperature and precipitation, and the animals and planets that have adapted to survive and thrive in that type of climate. And then over here it says ecosystem, the interactions among all living organisms and their non-living environment is in, in, in a certain place. And then it goes down to community. All the living beings within an ecosystem, such as plants, fungi, animals, and bacterial ba bacteria. <laughs> it does not include the air, dirt, water, or other non-living things. And this goes down to population, squad goals, find acorns, a group of individuals of the same species that live within the same community. And then individual. Where I live is my habitat and how I behave is my niche. One specific living organism. So what they're saying here is the world is a biosphere. And then we're going to go to what North America looks like. That would be the biome, like the area where it's at. And then the ecosystem would be like a forest in that area, right? It's got like all the, the deer and the trees and fish and, of course, the squirrels. And then the community... Wait a minute. 
the snow, the water, etc. And then the community, which would be like specific trees, I guess like pine trees and um, owls and <laughs> the animals. I don't know. I'm kind of mixed up between ecosystem and community. But then it goes down to population, which would be like all kinds of squirrels. And then individual, which I guess is like a difference between red squirrel and gray squirrel. I don't know. I'm assuming this is what they mean. Go ahead and tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. Next says biome map. Biomes are simply a way to classify and describe general parts of the planet. Each biome is determined by its temperature and precipitation, along with the living things that have evolved in that climate. There are two main types of biomes, terrestrial and aquatic. Ecologists have further broken down those two types into more specific classifications. Biome maps can be divided into many different ways to and allow us to understand the similarities between places on the opposite sides of the world. So these are different biomes. Cities. Although cities, towns, and suburbs are not considered biomes, humans have transformed the earth so much that we are now in a new geological era called the Anthropocene Epoch? Is that how you say that? Anyway, we're now in that. That thing. Yeah. And uh, as of right now, this is January 1st, 2024. So, yeah, that's how the world is right now, supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. Um, here's a little guide to understanding the colors here. Like, I'm in between the yellow and the green. Probably more yellow. So, I live in... I live in the grassland and temperate temperate forest area, apparently, from what this says. So take a look where you at, what's your area like, and then there you go. And then this says terrestrial biomes, aquatic biomes, and it shows you the different kinds of biomes on a pyramid. It says wet to dry, and then cold to hot. And you can see the cold, what would it be between wet and dry? The cold would be ice, then tundra, then taiga. And then like wet and medium temperature would be temperate forest. And then kind of wet, dry, medium temperature would be grassland. And then the dry, medium temperature would be scrubland and desert. And then what is this? Hot. So wet, hot is tropical rainforest. Wet-ish, hot, is tropical seasonal forest. More dry would be savanna. And then the hot and dry is the desert. Interesting. So then the next thing says, what is an ecosystem? <clears throat> All right. Every organism on the planet is dependent on others to live. Through ecology, the study of ecosystems, we can begin to grasp how much we rely on the natural world. Ecosystems can range in many sizes, from a large forest to a tiny puddle, and by learning about them, we begin to understand how living organisms in a certain place interact with one another. We can also see these living things interact with the non-living parts of their environment, like the soil, the temperature, the air, and the water. Interactions between wildlife and their environment provide us with important natural services, such as breathable air, fresh water, protection from natural disasters, fertile soil, and of course, food. By understanding large and small ecosystems, we can see how energy from the sun flows through the food web. Sorry about my phone. And how the cycle of life, death, and decay allow nutrients to be reused. Only when our ecosystems are intact can the natural world continue to seamlessly do the hard work of sustaining life on planet Earth. Food web. The mapping of the flow of energy. Who eats what and who gets what energy from whom. Arrows point to who is enjoying a tasty meal, which is the direction the energy is moving. So, as you can see, the arrows point. The bear is eating the fish, which eats the smaller fish, which is eating things in the water, which is eating, yeah, that thing. Cells, I guess. I don't know. Amoeba? What do you call it? Um, what, do you, uh, what is that? Algae? I think it's eating algae, right? Trophic levels. An organism's position in the food web and how far away it is from the original source of energy, the sun, starting with producers and typically ending with an apex predators. And if this were like a fish, then a person might be eating the fish and the bear might be eating the person. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. 
So the next page says, who eats what? Producers make their own food from solar energy. Herbivores eat only plants. Carnivores eat only other animals. Omnivores eat both plants and animals. Decomposers eat waste and dead organisms. All energy for life starts with the sun. Some microscopic life gets its energy from thermal vents. And then it's showing you this little map here. So there's the decomposers eating dead things. Here's fish eating algae and stuff. The tree is eating soil. I mean, <laughs> the tree eats soil. Wow, the tree gets nutrients from the soil and the water and the air. Um, squirrels eat nuts from the trees. Um, why is it saying the squirrel eats the bird? Wouldn't the bird eat the squirrel? It's saying the bear eats the bird. The bird eats the fish. Bear eats the fish. Anyway, you can see. <laughs> All right, next page. Classification of living things. Taxonomic ranking <laughs> helps scientists clarify and identify different species. Scientists include every single living thing that has ever existed on Earth, which allows us to see how life on Earth has evolved. Taxonomic ranking also helps us understand what different species have in common, even if they have been extinct for thousands of years or live in opposite sides of the world. The main domains, bacteria, eukarya, organisms that have cells with a nucleus, animalia, plantae, archaea, fungi, and protozoa. I don't know how to say any of this stuff, but I'm assuming that's, yeah, it says single cell organisms with no defined nucleus and different biochemistry than bacteria, whatever that is. And these are organisms that have cells with a nucleus. And then this is single cell organisms with no defined nucleus. So there you go. Stuff I don't know. You learn something new every day. Next page, levels of classification, domain, kingdom, Animalia. Um, yeah, fine. You can, you can read those. I'm not reading those. Class, order, family, genus, species. So it goes from like all things to certain things. <laughs> what did they take out in the next one? They took out the butterflies and was that a spider? I guess they're taking out the insects. So we're just sticking with like mammals, I'm assuming. Nope, because they're still birds and turtles and they lay eggs. So they took out insects. And then they're taking out the egg-laying creatures, so now we're down to mammals, yeah. And then we're just sticking with, like, savannah mammals, I'm guessing. And then, like, horse-like shaped mammals from that area. And then, like, and then even less, and then, and then we're down to zebras. <laughs> All right. How living things interact. Competing for food and resources, finding a place to call home, and reproducing are some of the main priorities for all species. To do this, animals, bacteria, and plants have evolved to interact in many different ways to survive. These interactions help to maintain a balanced and healthy ecosystem. Predation. One species eats another. That is a lion about to kill a zebra. Um, this says, calm... Men, commons elism, el, elism. Um, one species gains and the other is unaffected. Free ride. So like barnacles on a whale. Um, this says parasite her parasitism. Yeah, one species gains by harming the other species. Damn mosquitoes. This one says interspecific competition. Different species competing for the same resources. So, like, a wolf and a snake trying to get the same rat. Um, mutualism. I love this one. Both species gain something from each other. So the bees get pollen to make honey, and the plant gets its pollen spread to reproduce. Interspecific comp- oh, we already did that one. Intraspecific competition. The same species competing for the same resources. Huh? That's the same. 
Different species. The same species. Okay, like two of the same birds fighting over a worm. I gotcha, I gotcha. Resource partitioning. Two species indirectly compete for the same resource by developing different niches or behaviors. So they're both wanting to eat the bugs, but they do it in different ways. Okay, gotcha. Interesting. This is, this is pretty cool. I like this. And then... How to protect our planet. There are many things we can do to preserve the natural world. Never forget that you have the power to protect our planet. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Don't just throw away broken things. Repair them or turn them into something new. I do that. <laughs> I'm bad about that. doing that and then I'll hang on to stuff. Drives them crazy. Educate. We need to understand how our ecosystems work in order to protect them. Plant trees. Trees and forests filter greenhouse gases and create oxygen. I planted a bunch of trees and about five of them just got taken down by the electric company when they were trying to scrape the land to clean it up underneath the power lines. I was sad. I spent like $10 to get 10 trees and five of them just got taken out just like that after I grew them for a couple of years. Conserve water. Turn off water. Fresh water is a limited resource and it's scarce in many parts of the world. Using less water also leads to less runoff and waste from water dumped into the ocean. How we do business. Often clothes, electronics, and other products are created to be used, thrown away, and replaced. This is a waste of valuable resources. Instead, demand that companies create products that are made to last a long time and can be repaired. Buy from businesses that put the planet first. That's actually, I really like that. Yes, they need to build things that last a while again and can be repaired. Like washing machines used to be amazing and last forever. And now washing machine lasts like maybe two years before it breaks down. They also need to make it where it's not so expensive to repair the things. Ideally in a good world, that's how it would work. Unfortunately, places are money hungry. So of course they're gonna make things that break down easy and are expensive to fix. Volunteer, conservation groups need your help. So um, in our town, we have a community garden that unfortunately I have not helped out with, but it is there where like people can go and help grow things. There's also a flower field that they do for the bees and you know just to have something pretty in the town. Zero landfill waste. Recycling in your home is great, but to have a larger impact, it needs to happen on a bigger scale. Help create systems for everyone to compost and recycle at your work or school. I like that as well, like, especially the compost, because people waste so much food at school. But unfortunately, people would have to be educated on what can and can't be composted, because you can't put in meat in the compost, from what I read and from what I learned. Certain things can be composted, other things cannot. Just like you could also shred up paper and compost it. Um, this one looks like it's renewable resources. Alternative energy. To reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we need to change the type of energy we use. I agree. And what gets me is that oh, these companies, you know, the world would be such a better place if we had solar power. You know, that's the number one would be solar power. Wind power is kind of good, but it also has its downsides. Nuclear power, I have no idea how that works, and that's kind of intimidating. Hydropower, um, it would be good too. It just depends on how much water flow you have going on. Thermal, I don't know what that one is. Um, I'm assuming that's when you like have water tanks on top of your house that heat up the water and then by the time you run it through the pipes, it's nice and toasty. Biofuel, I'm not sure what that one is either, but yeah, these are something we need to look into. That's the problem is people aren't educated enough. I feel like if we got more education on these kind of things, more people would be inspired to, you know, change the world for the better. How to protect our planet. Sustainable fishing. Our entire world depends on the marine ecosystems. We need to end overfishing and only fish responsibly. Regulations. We need to create and enforce regulations that prevent farms and factories from polluting our streams, oceans, and air. Eat less meat. This one I disagree with. I think meat is a vital part of a protein resource. And we are, you know, animals are here for us to eat. It takes more energy and resources to raise livestock than to grow crops. Reducing your meat and fish consumption helps the whole world. Um, 
especially fish, is an amazing thing to eat, so I, I highly disagree with this statement. Um, also, growing crops can be fed to your animals, so I don't know why that's such a big deal. Oops. Sustainable farming. The huge and growing human population will always need large-scale farming, but with a knowledge of ecology, biology, and economics, we can invest in making a large-scale agriculture prof profitable and healthy. We can invest in making large-scale agriculture profitable and healthy for the whole world. This is also why I like to support the farming classes at school, like FFA. I think that, you know, they're, they're really teaching kids about what it means to be a good farmer and how to make farming better for the world. <laughs> I feel like such a dweeb right now. Um, sustainable work, clean water, food security, fight poverty. When people in poverty have a few options, they can turn to illegal poaching, lumber exploitation, unsustainable farming, and hurting and dangerous mining. We cannot expect poor people to shoulder the responsibility of saving the planet when they are worried about providing for themselves. By addressing the underlying problems of poverty, we can all find a way to live, survive, and thrive without harming our planet. Um, protect wildlife. To preserve important ecosystems, we need to protect natural wildlife areas. Reduce your carbon footprint. Use less fossil fuel and coal. Use less electricity. Carpool and drive less. Ride your bike. Use less plastic. Speak up. Read your voice. Get out there and demand the change that you want to see in the world. Share your knowledge. But also, if you're going to do that, make sure you know what the hell you're talking about. There are some people out there that are just spewing vile nonsense. And they don't have all their facts straight. They're not educated. So they're saying all these things that they think they understand without knowing the actual causes or effects or you know, just general knowledge on the issues. And then here we go. We start day one, which I'm not doing today. I was just going over the first part of the book. I even wrote dates on the top. So this is January 4th, January 7th. Um, starting for January and February, it's going to be every three days. January 10th and 13th. January and February is going to be... Every three days I'll do an activity. And then March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and November is all going to be every two days. And then December drops down to, I think, every three days because it gets really cold. So yeah, that's the end. This will be the last page, which is December 21st. And then the next day would be Christmas, so I'd skipped Christmas December 29th. And then the 31st will be the end of the book, which I will discuss the, you know, we'll go over the whole thing and see what I've done throughout the whole year. So hopefully I actually do this and get it done. So that's it for the I Love the Earth book, and I hope you guys enjoy this first video and follow me along the way as I try to... For this one, I'm going to be collecting, like, different parts of nature, like if I find seeds, leaves, um bark, um, feathers, fur, anything I find that relates to earthly things, I want to put them in these pages. So that means I'm going to be getting outside more to collect things. Flower petals, especially whenever it's the season for flowers. And like anything that relates to the season or being outdoors that I find, I'm going to be adding them to the book. And then there's some pages that are coloring pages, and then some are where I write things down, so... I thought it'd be interesting. Um, I'm also going to try to put all of, like, I'm also going to try to take pictures of all the pages and put everything on my, my blog, which I will try to link in the descriptions of the videos. So hopefully you guys can check those out if you want to. Instead of me, like, just, you know, scanning over the book, you'll actually get to see the full, the full pages. Anyway, thanks for watching my video, and try not to let me slack on this because I need to actually start a project and finish it. Um, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys later. Bye!